Okay, continuing to work with surface area. I have another problem for us to work on, and I've already tried to sketch this out a little bit, mainly because I'm horrible at drawing, but here, here's the scenario. We have this circle over here, and I've, I have the equation for it, and it has this center along this x-axis here, and it's a distance of capital R away from the origin, and then its radius is this lowercase r. And what we're going to do is take this circle and rotate it about the y-axis. And what you're going to see is that we get this torus. But really, if I were to describe it to you, it's a donut. So we get this donut shape, and we want to find the surface area of this donut. So again, this kind of looks like there's only half of it here. It's coming out towards you. So maybe I can get the, the lower bit of it. It's coming out towards us like this. So we have a full a full donut here. We want to find its surface area. And in order to do so, I mean, this is going to be a pretty standard thing. Um, what we've seen in the last couple videos is we're just going to take a slice out. And it looks like to me, we want to take this horizontal slice. So let's take this horizontal slice here. It looks something like, like this. Take this horizontal slice and we'll bring it out and start to look at it just like we've done in the last couple videos. And again, I, I didn't say this, but please, if you want to try to solve this on your own, please pause the video and give that a try. So we, we're dealing with this slice here. And what we've seen in the last couple videos, we, we have this circle and we draw a little radius on it. We can draw that on our graph too. And what we said is we want to find these little pieces of surface area. And we've seen in the last couple videos that we're going to take the circumference of this slice, so 2 pi r, and multiply it by a little piece of arc length, by a little piece of arc length, by ds, by ds. And we'll end up with something like this. Get this drawn, and when we multiply these guys together, we end up getting these tiny pieces of surface area, and that's what we're after. And what we've seen now is all we need to do is apply this to our situation. We need to figure out what R is and what DS is. And since we are rotating around this Y axis, R is going, we know what R is. R is going to be X. R is going to be X. So we're going to have 2 pi X. And now the question is, how do we want to represent ds? That's really the question. Do we, do we want to end up integrating with respect to x, with respect to y? Like, what, what, what are we going to do? And just for this video, I'm going to say we're going to want to integrate with respect to x. It's a choice that we're making. So we're going to integrate with respect to x, and that means that this x right here, which is the radius of these slices, is going to remain the way it is. We don't need to further solve it or, or relate it to what we have over here. We're going to leave it like it is. And now, since we're integrating with respect to x, that was our decision, we're going to get ds in terms of dx. So let's work on that now. So ds, we've seen, is equal to the square root of dx squared plus dy squared. And since we want to integrate with respect to x, we're going to factor dx squared out of this radical. So we'll have ds is equal to the square root of 1 plus dy over dx, all of that squared. And then we have a dx out here. We've already seen this in the, the other videos. And now, again, we need to find what the derivative of y is with respect to x. And the equation of our circle that we're looking at is over here. So let's bring it down and start to work on it. So the equation of our circle that we're looking at that got rotated is x minus r, capital R, squared. And then we have plus y squared. And this is equal to lowercase r squared. This is just the equation of our circle. And now what we want to do is solve for y so that we can differentiate it with respect to x. So we are going to get this. We'll have y squared is equal to r squared minus x minus capital R squared. And then taking the square root of both sides, we get this. We have y is equal to plus or minus the square root of r squared minus x minus capital R squared. Okay, and now the major question is, okay, do we take the positive or the negative root of y? And I'm just going to say we're going to take the positive root, and I switch colors, and I want to show you why. So y is equal to this positive root here. y is equal to the positive root, square root of r squared minus x minus r squared. And on our graph, what does this represent? This represents this top half of our circle this top half of our circle right here. So this is the top half of the circle. 
And what we're going to do, because we're going to be taking the derivative of this, what we're going to do is when we set up our, our integral in a little bit, we're only going to be calculating the, the surface area of this top half of our donut, the top half of this torus here. So we'll need to remember, we can't forget this, that we'll have to multiply whatever we get out of our integral by two. So we'll have to remember that. Now that we have y, we again, we're after the derivative. So let's take the derivative with respect to x. And this is going to be equal to 1 half using some power and chain rule. So we have 1 half times this quantity, r squared minus x minus capital R squared. And then we have to the negative 1 half power. And then derivative of this inside here. Well, r, remember, is a constant. So the derivative of the inside is going to be, we're going to be multiplying by, and this is going to be negative 2 times x minus capital R. That's our derivative. Now, we can clean this up a little bit. It looks like these twos are going to cancel, so that's nice. And let's just rewrite this. So we'll have dy dx is equal to, and we'll have x minus r, and we can't forget this minus sign. I almost forgot it. So we have minus this quantity x minus r in that numerator. And then denominator, we have this radical. We have the square root of r squared minus x minus capital R squared. That's our derivative. Now, before we start to throw this back into our, our little piece of arc length that we're trying to calculate, maybe it would be a good idea to square it. That might save us some writing time. So let's square this guy before we throw it back in. That will make things a little neater, I think. So let's square this derivative. Squaring it in this numerator, we're going to get x minus r, this quantity, squared. And then denominator-wise, we're going to lose the radical, so we just have r squared minus x minus r, capital R, squared. So that's our derivative squared. And now we can throw this back into what we were talking about in terms of a little piece of arc length. So we found that derivative. We found that. This is equal to, this is equal to 1 plus our derivative squared. I did not remember it. Let's see. We have x minus r squared in that numerator. So this quantity here, x minus r squared in that numerator. And then denominator-wise, what do we have? Let's see. We had lowercase r squared minus that. I think I can remember that. Here we go. Lowercase r squared minus x minus r squared. Let's see if I got that right. I think I did. x minus r. Beautiful. All right. So that's what we have, and we can't forget our dx right there. So we have our little piece of arc length now. Wonderful. Let's get this guy up here. Let's get this up here. Make it look nice and pretty. All right. Right there. Beautiful. So this is, uh, this entire thing right here is our little piece of surface area. Now we have everything we need to throw this into an integral and compute it and get our answer. So let's do that. Let's do that. Here we go. We have everything we need now. All right. Let's go definite integral now definite integral, and we'll throw limits on last. So we'll have a uh, two pi, two pi x times the uh, square root, times the square root of one plus, and then we have this here. So we have x minus capital R squared, and then we have over, over R squared minus x minus lowercase r squared, and then Make sure we get everything in here. And then we have dx. So we'll extend this guy out. And then we have dx. And now, since we're integrating with respect to x, what are our limits of integration going to be here? Well, they're going to be uh, this guy right here, which is capital R minus, it's going to be capital R minus lowercase r. And then upper limit of integration is going to be capital R plus lowercase r. These are our limits right here. And now we have our full definite integral that we want to compute now in order to get the surface area. But remember, remember, what does this represent? This right here, remember, only represents half. This is only half of our torus, only half of the torus, only half of the surface area of our torus. And I think I'll save computing this for the next video.